The Deputy President of the Senate, Ovie Omoagege, has urged the national leadership of the Christian Association of Nigeria that all the All Progressive Congress APC would not present two people from the same religion as its presidential and vice presidential candidates for the 2023 general elections. Earlier, the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria warned political parties against heating up the polity with the either Christian Christian or Muslim Muslim ticket in the presidency. Well, joining us to discuss this is Olu Martins. He's a political analyst and Leonard Ebute, also a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to start with you, Leonard. Um, the issue of Muslim, Muslim or Christian, Christian tickets, should that even be uh, a basis for conversations in the first place? Should that be an issue? Um, what about the issue of um, merits? What about being um, fit for the job? What about um, the people who are being fielded as candidates for political parties? Should we not be looking at their capabilities or their precedence? Should it be religion or ethnicity playing the first card or the first point of relevance in this conversation? So that's, thank you uh, for having me. That's an interesting way to frame the argument. However, um, we should understand, we've had Muslim, Muslim candidates before the Abiola era. Unfortunately, they never saw the light of day. But we should understand, first of all, that this is participatory democracy. And democracy is about representation. And representation is across tiers. This is why we have geopolitical zones. We have religion. We have ethnic groups. We have minority leader, majority leader. All of these are enclaves of political value that need to feel represented. Otherwise, a democratic experiment falls on its head. And so while your question, the way you frame it, attempts to contrast um, this thinking with competence and all that, it's, it's, it's actually not the case. It is a the, the real issue is that because politically political parties want to win election and necessarily must win election to govern, the way to win in a democratic setting and, and to feel and to form a government, a legitimate government, both in a legal term and in the minds of the people, is for them to feel represented. And so the statement, while I agree that it is nuanced a bit, yes, it contrasts with competence, it does not, because there are as many competent Christians as there are competent Muslims. And so a democratic experiment in a nation where the Christian-Muslim divide is very stark. We are, we are as divided as can possibly be. There is a house of Fulani enclave. There is the South enclave. Even in the South, there is the South, 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 East, Southwest divide. In the North, you have the Northern minority who are a majority in population, and then you have the house of Fulani who are dominant in government. All of these calculations must come into the mix for parties to present candidates that are indeed representative of our diversity. So I think the, the statement is not out of place. Interesting. Uh, Olu Martins, it, we are people uh, who are divided along ethnic and religious lines. We all know that. Every time we analyze issues, we look at them from those prisms. But how well uh, has it helped us as a country? Um, you know going about issues from a religious, either a religious or uh, an ethnic perspective. How, what has it yielded us, you know, so far? I, I'm, I'm not in any way saying that we should not, um, you know, involve religion or ethnicity in what we do, but I'm saying we're so hung up on it, and I'm wondering how beneficial has it been for us going forward? Uh, should we not be looking outside of these prisms to, to an, analyze issues or really even uh, talk about governance? Thank you very much. Let me again and again continue to applaud um, plus, T, plus TV plus politics for always putting these very thorny issues, if you like to speak, in the front burner without the engagement of the media at the forum of the estates, the collective freedoms 
of all of us uh, is endangered. So to that extent, I should give you kudos for always engaging these very topical issues. Uh, but the main issue here is that I think that the postulations and aversions, if you like to put it, of the Senate president is anachronistic, is a cake, is medieval. The world is fast moving away from some of those uh, very um, pedestrian issues of religion. However, is that when religion come when religion comes to play, is when the center cannot guarantee anymore a level playing field for Christians or Muslims. Because outside Christians or Muslims, what about the African traditional religion? And what about those who don't even believe in God? You know what? So when we pander to religion, it's, it's, it's a salutary pointer that the center does not hold anymore. When we pander to ethnicism. It is a salutary pointer that the center does not hold anymore. What it means is that our fault lines are deepening, and perhaps this administration, this AP administration as led by President Mohamed Bari, has even made it more apparent by some of his actions or inactions. All right, so I do not, I do not, I do not subscribe to those arguments. The world has gone you know beyond that because economics has nothing to do with religion intelligence has nothing to do with religion capacity has nothing to do with religion is when i feel that because i practice xyz religion i am undermined or i feel that i'm a second class citizen or i do i cannot worship my god the way i want to worship it that's when we begin to ponder to some of these pedestrian discussions so what the current president has said in his engagement with this deputy senate president is to tell him that there is a failure of leadership there is a failure of competency it appears like if you are a christian or a muslim as the case may be you benefit outside your competency outside your capacities outside the things that you have gone to that that you ordinarily have been able to get but for the fact that you are christian or muslim otherwise this thing should not even come up in our discussions you know at all there's no christian brain there's no muslim brain economics science chemistry physics all over the world is non it's not religion. So to ponder to these issues, they're taking us backwards. We've gone beyond that. I do not care. I'm a pastor. I pastor a church. But I do not care, really, if my president is a Christian or a Muslim. If I have... Uh, I think we're having connection issues with you, um, Mr. Lou Martins. Um, but if you can hear me, just say something. I'm from property. Ah, okay. I can hear you very okay, well. Go can ahead. you hear me? Yes, you, you yeah, broke off. May, may I respond to Ola Martins? Yes. No, no, what? Oh, 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 Olu, Olu, I think you're having connection issues. So let's go to Leonard. Let, 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 Leonard, you, you think you want to differ uh, on some of the things that he said. So go ahead, because I have a question. Okay. Leonard, go ahead. Okay, great. Um, uh, can, I, can I speak? Can I yes, respond? Please. Yes, please. Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, so you see, the realm of politics does not dwell in idealism. And in an ideal situation, a good leader is a good leader. And when leaders are good, nobody cares where they are from, right? Um, nobody cares that Nelson Mandela is Zulu. He's an African leader, right? Primarily, we identify with him. He has that general acceptability and identity. And to Allah Martin's point, yes, the country is a nightmare. We are not in an ideal situation. And so if we are looking for a democratic experiment that at least is acceptable, we must look at all the different fragmented units and give them a sense of belonging. Why do we have agitations coming from left, right, and center? Some of them are legitimate because some people feel they don't belong. Some may be pedestrian because some people want to use it as a point of activism to gain personal benefits and all that. But the thing is this, democracy is not meant to be ideal. It is the government of the majority where the minority is allowed to have its say, but it is a good form of government when, they are, when the minority has a voice, a voice that can be heard and acted upon. And so in a Nigeria of today, where religious sentiment 
is the single most important dividing factor between the north and south even though it's not real we know that the real divide is economic great because i was we about to ask that who's made because it seems like we've allowed ourselves to be played along these lines because the average Nigerian, for example, when you were growing up, when you were in school, you didn't ask your seat partner if he was Christian or Muslim to let them sit close yeah. to you. When you were playing yeah. as a kid, you did not ask them, are you a Christian or Muslim? Or if not, I'm not playing with you. So I'm saying yeah. maybe we've allowed our politicians to play us or play up because I think that's what the Cannes president was trying to talk I'm, about, I'm, 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 heating I'm, up the I'm, polity. I'm, so what if we now, for example, you're saying that it's not an ideal situation. Why, if, we, if it's not an ideal um, situation, why can't we create an ideal situation that but suits... Cannot, that you, suits you, you, sorry, what? You will, you will build from where you are. You can't jump the gun from where you are. But are we really building anything, be? Leonard? Are we there building are, anything? Because it looks like we let, we let the politicians I, I think, set the I pace think, and I then we the follow. Argument, I, think the, I think the right argument is to not discount the role of our diversity in our politics. The whole point of democracy is the recognition of diversity. So, and so the di I'm sorry, I, I, do, I do not want this to be a back and forth, but what is the diversity we're talking about here? The diversity of Nigerians is their culture, not their religion, is it? Religion you, should you not necessarily say, play a part in this, it should it? It's possible for us to have competent Christians and competent Muslims in government. It, these things are not mutually exclusive. If the idea is to find competence and to have a religious mix that is acceptable, that should be the agenda. And I think that agenda is more worthwhile than to pitch one against the other. We can have competent, multi-religious groups coexisting in the running of this country, and that is a more acceptable model where we are right now down to take competence alone as the only selection criteria. That's unrealistic. I understand. That's my point. But, but my, my question was that can we not just talk about competent southerners and northerners and w people from, you know, the south-south instead of saying, oh, competent northern Christians? Or do, do you understand what I'm saying? We're complicating the issue. And so most half the time, I might be wrong, but I'm going to toss this to Olu or Ola. Half the time, we're more interested in um, you know, the zones and the religion, and that plays up more in, in terms of who we're picking in, instead of looking at who the person really is and what they're able to offer. But I'm going to go back to uh, Ola. I hope that you can hear us now, Ola, because we were having connection problems with you. I, 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 I've, been, I've been hearing you. I've been okay, hearing great. you. Well, we I've could, been following the discussion. You. I've been following the discussions all the while. It's been, it's been very interesting, but can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yes, yes. First of all, my name is Olu Martins. Olu Martins. Uh, I'm so sorry. Yes, yes. And um, I, 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 I couldn't agree with you uh, more in your engagement with Leonard. Uh, you have made the job, in a manner of speaking, easier for me. Because the root of the matter is that a good footballer, if you are, if you are a striker, for instance, a David Beckham holds the ball. A Ruth Van Istroy knows where the ball is going. We should go where the ball is going. We shouldn't go where the ball is. You know, we have this, we have this convenient argument that we post all the time. Check for reason that because network was bad in XYZ areas. And the network is dealing with you right now. <laughs> um, Olumasins, can you hear me? Uh, I think we're having connection issues with um, Olu again. Yeah. Are you back? Can I pitch in? Okay, Leonard, I think you're going to have to save the day again. Um, now, Leonard, I, I want to go to what the Khan president said. I'd, I'd like to quote him directly. He was saying that political parties are actually the oh, ones hitting up the polity about the issue of Christian Christian or Muslim Muslim tickets for the presidency. He's saying that these things are not supposed to matter. But you see, a lot of people are analyzing it in a way that it seems like, oh, the, the Christians were, were the uh, can was going there to say, we want to make sure that there is a Christian 
Muslim ticket. We want everybody to be properly represented. But I don't think that that's where they were coming from. They were trying to say, let's play down on these sentiments and look at the people that the political parties are fronting. Yes, so, so, so I, I mean, again, it, 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 when we make it an either or conversation, we would have an indeterminate argument. My, my point here, uh, as, as Socrates um, and Aristotle, you know, the founders of democracy or proponents of democracy, yeah, Socrates predominantly expressed, democracy is always the best form of government where competent people are the participators. And by participators, I mean from the, the, the candidates to even the voters. So if you have a medical condition, for example, that is a gynecological condition, right? Even if we are going to vote via a democratic process to determine who is going to operate on you, the people that are qualified to vote will be gynecologists. And so in the end, the worst you can have is a gynecologist. But democracy is not like that. You cannot discount the lack of education in the polity, the, the brain waves of the majority, the, the, the religious sentiments of the people, the tribal enclaves to which they belong. You cannot discount that in favor of an ideal that says, let's find the most competent person. Democracy is not a competency test. It is a popularity test. And so the candidates that we appeal more to a wider base will be will, will form the government. So if we are looking for that, then we have better recognized what that base is looking for in religion. To say, in religion, who is the most competent person of this religious extraction? In tribe, who is the most competent person of this tribe? And if we do that, we will save ourselves the idealist thinking that overnight we can change a, 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 a significantly distorted Nigerian political system. And it is not just a Nigerian political system, it is democracy in general. We forget that democracy threw up Donald Trump in America. Are we really, um, I, I, are we really I was practicing making a, point. a democracy in Nigeria? Because you, you, Leonard, have been making reference to ideal situations. Uh, I do not know if it, ideally we are practicing a democracy, or realistically, that's not the case. I do not know, but Leonard, uh, l let's see if we can let um, Olu speak. Olu, are you back? Uh, Mr. Olu Massens, are you, st are you still there? Uh, I think you're trying to speak, but um, your connection is really, really bad. Unfortunately, well, I'm going to have Leonard answer that question. So Leonard, Ideally, we're supposed to be operating a democracy where you're saying that popularity carries the day. But realistically, is it a democracy that Nigeria is um, operating on or something that is similar to it? Oh, well, there is no perfect democracy. Uh, when you look at the American electoral system, it, it's fraught with uh, irregularities that go back on We have a Nigerian version. Democracy is a journey. We are trying to be as democratic as we can be. We, we are far from it. But my thesis is this. With what we have, I'm a business person. You, you don't analyze a business case from where you want to be. You analyze the business case from a base case. The base case is this is where we are. And if you want to move us from where we are to where we want to be, what can we do now to win in the short term while we are on the journey to the long term? But if we say we shouldn't talk about ethnicity, we shouldn't talk about religion, we shouldn't talk about the polarizing political views, that in itself is an undemocratic statement. Because democracy is about um, the alignment of opposing um, views and opposing um, concerns. And so when the current chairman or anybody is saying these views will better align, trust issues will be better resolved if we are able to have representation from the two major religions in Nigeria, 
that is a sensible statement to make. It's practical. It's realistic. We don't have to like it. It is where we are. And that is the best place to start from, to move towards where we want to be. It is not by accident that the parties have a zoning formula that zones precedences and positions between the north and south. It is in recognition that people need to have a sense of belonging in the Nigerian experiment across those lines. And so if there are other dimensions other than a north to south zoning, uh, then it makes sense to consider it in the, the analysis. It cannot be binary. Either this or that. Maybe it requires a lot of um, a lot of other variables, and I think religion in today's Nigeria is a significant variable that you cannot discount, even in business, for that matter. Hmm. Interesting. Let's try again. If we have Olu Martins back, um, I think we lost him uh, completely. Uh, we've lost his connection. Um, apologies, um, Ola, um, Olu Martins for the internet connection. Welcome to Nigeria. Um, Leonard, before we wrap things up, um, the average Nigerian is obviously tired of the um, drama within the political parties. I just finished speaking with um, a PDP representative and he was talking about the fact that uh, he wasn't really straightforward about the zoning process because I asked a direct question as to uh, if you have already given the national chairman uh, or voted a national chairman who's from the north, um, does that mean that your party's ticket is going to the south? And he said, well, that the party has opened the floor for all hats to be thrown in uh, and, and whoever emerges, emerges. Again, that, of course, you, you know, plays down on the dissenting voices that you're talking about, the fact that we have polarization and we are diverse, but... If we, if we do that now, for example, in the PDP, where is the room for all of us to be represented at some point or the other? First of all, uh, that remains uh, a very, very significant hurdle to cross within the PDP because zoning is written into the PDP's constitution. Um, I mean, constitutions can be amended. Um, there is equal voting rights at the table for that amendment to happen. It is not a unilateral decision by some board of trustee or party chairmanship or whatever. It requires an amendment of the constitution, which to my mind, and I'm a follower in this space, has not happened. As it is today, the indication, unless the PDP um, is able to review their constitution, which I don't think they, 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 they can, uh, is that for sure the zoning formula favors a southern candidate. But that said, this is not about the PDP or the APC or about the political enclave. Uh, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, right? I believe there are equal distribution of competent people across geographies in Nigeria. I am from Benue State. In Benue State, I am from a minority tribe. I am an Idoma person. The Idomas have competent people from geopolitically, they call us North Central. When we don't feel like it, we call ourselves peoples of the Middle Belt. We have a political identity crisis that, that is also a problem for us. But beyond all this, we can have a Southern competent person of a religion that is acceptable to those who care about religion. We can have a northern competent person that is acceptable to those who care about religion. This is the model that we want to, that we should practically um, be looking at. And we shouldn't be thinking PDP or APC. We should be looking at Nigeria and say, how would a typical Nigerian, I go to my village, I've been to my village minimum 10 times this year. I've traveled okay. minimum 18 states in Nigeria this year. So I don't know anybody or maybe very few people visit rural places like I do. My business is in transportation, so I have to know. And, okay. and, and I'm involved in politics. The thing is this. What politicians know that we analysts have refused to know or we have decided to be blind and we're using our religious brains to analyze is that there is a way that the, the people that form governments in this country think. Okay. Politicians know that, and they play those nuances. Okay. So, but if we come on TV and we say the nice things that would happen in a Lagos business school setup, 
or that will happen in a boardroom setup, then we miss the whole point of democracy because the professor and the illiterate um, 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 farmer have the same votes. In closing. In closing, I agree fully that there are a number of variables that need to be um, in the in the in the equation for deciding who the best candidates are. Number one, they must come from the right religion so okay. that they will have acceptability. Number okay. two, they will have the right competence for the Nigeria of today and the next four years. Number three, they must be able to um, reach out in a manner that guarantees them victory. It is okay for us to bring good candidates that cannot win election, and we, we do this every year. Please, good candidates, find a platform that can get you victory okay. so that you, just, you don't just become a TV celebrity. We have to go. Thank you very much. Leonard Ebute uh, is a political analyst, and also we had um, Olu Martins, who is also a political uh, analyst. Thank you very much for being part of the conversation. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick, quick break to bring you highlights of the week and all the interesting conversations we've had on Plus Politics. And when we come back, I'll be telling you good night. And the fact that they try to, um, you know, cover it up or probably have these conversations behind closed doors shows that they should be something we should be worried about. Um, in the first place, um, the quality of what they are doing is very important to us and we need to make sure we have a way of tracking what the judiciary are doing. It's just like having our lawmakers over there in the National Assembly and let them know what they're doing. So how are they representing us right? So um, I think it's something that they have to look into once more and it's something that we, the taxpayers, deserve to know. What is this money used for? Because right about now in Nigeria, the quality of service for judiciary system is very low. The service delivery is extremely low. The timely delivery of service is also extremely low. The economists have been uh, in existence even before my great-grandfather was born. And uh, I think uh, they have an integrity to protect. They have an image to protect. And they can't just come out and give out information that is not true. Definitely they've done their findings. Now, I went through the report from the economist. They talked about soldiers' welfare, that soldiers are not well paid. They talk about diversion of soldiers' uh, 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 allowances, which are not getting to the soldiers. They talk about poor feeding. Now, let's keep aside the area of arms selling now. From those three points out, the economists gave out, I can vow for the economists that that report was true. I was a soldier, a former soldier. All what they've stated happened to me, myself, when I was in the Bakasi Peninsula in the 90s. Our funds were cut off, we were nowhere paid, we were being fed like cows. We are expecting that the government will resolve it, Ken and Ogoni, and apologize to the Ogoni people, and we take it up from there. And, and, and what happens if none of that takes place? If none of that takes place, um, you would have heard that Mr. President said that he has given license to MPDC or NMPC, I can assure you. That one bed will not fly into a body in the name of oil if those things are not taken care of. No, so, 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 so can you repeat that? What, what do you mean by that? Um, I, I, I read the I statement mean, from the president. Because you cannot, if you like me, you will like my dog. You cannot like my oil. I hate me. It appears that there is so much of government spaces in parts of the north. Now, parts of the east is also falling in a succumbing towards it. So, government must show presence in these areas. If you need to go, Defeat these guys, hold territory while you are advanced to do more. Get more uh, food soldiers, more boots on the ground, like we said elsewhere, and do the need food. There's no longer time for paying lip service and talking. You cannot be warning in this day and age. Uh, well, you see, this is what's going to play out uh, on, uh, on the election day. And it's actually going to be between two political parties. You can note it down. It's going to be between ABC and Abda. It's not about their candidates anymore. It's going to be between APC and Abda. And I know that when it comes to that, uh, I believe that Abda will take the day. I, I believe that Charles Solido has what it takes 
in this 21st century, it has what it takes to you know, carry on with the development of an Amra state. Thank you all for being part of the conversation. We hope you enjoyed all of our broadcasts for this week. We'll see you on Monday on Plus Politics. I'm Mary Anacone. Have a good evening.